How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. Today I'm going to be looking at an FDM printer from Anycubic. This is their Mega Zero 2.0. I have a resin printer from them that I have really enjoyed using. I bought that a while ago. But they sent me this one so I could play around with it and see what I could come up with. So I made some designs that I thought would fit well with this printer. So that's what this video is going to be about. The printer itself comes in a few different parts, so there is a little bit of assembly required. Nothing too difficult though, only a few bolts here and there. The most complicated part is probably getting all the connections correct on the back, but everything is labeled, so it didn't take long to get this thing up and running. The first thing I wanted to build was something to hold my paint bottles from Vallejo. I played around with a few different orientations and I set them up like this and then uh, it reminded me of something that I had built a little while ago. I made this piece of wargame terrain, uh, it was my first video on here actually, and uh, it has 11 of these engines and they're all round and so I decided, hey, why don't I hollow them out, turn it into a paint holder. So I got the dimensions of the bottles and I jumped over to the iPad to design this thing. The app that I used is Shaper 3D. It's pretty easy to use. I had a reference photo for the ship in front of me, but I had to play around with some of the dimensions because I wanted it to fit on the printer first of all, and I also wanted it to house the paint bottles. So there were a few things I had to adjust, but in the end I was pretty happy with uh, what I came up with. I then moved the file over to the computer, I sliced it, put it in the machine, and I began printing. After 65 hours, the print was finished, and it was time to take it off of the printing bed. It comes with a removable magnetic printing surface, so that makes removing this far easier. Once I had it off the surface, it was time to remove the supports. To be honest, I did not think this through very well when I designed this. The supports on the interior uh, between the engines were incredibly difficult to remove. Probably took me 30-40 minutes to remove all of the supports. So that's a good lesson for next time. Think about the supports and how I'm going to remove them. In terms of storage solutions for paint bottles, it's not the most practical or efficient use of space, but I think it's pretty cool, and it does hold my paints. The second thing I wanted to print for this video is a display base for some Bondi ship models. I wanted to use the existing stock stands that come with the ships, uh, but I wanted there to be a base that had a housing for the battery and all the electronics. So I jumped back on the iPad and began designing that. This is something I've been thinking about for a while now. I know a lot of people really enjoyed the X-Wing TIE Fighter diorama that I built. This is basically a simplified version of that. Everything's been scaled down, including the electronics. So it'd be far easier to make these. I could swap out the ships and change what ships were on either end. I'm not sure if I'm going to make more of these to sell or anything like that. I just wanted to print out a prototype to see how it would work. And the filament printer did a great job. Printed this out in no time. I made a mistake of the thickness where the ships uh, are supposed to sit, but uh, I glued them in place. So it ended up being okay in the end. 
I found these 3 volt LED filaments on AliExpress. I'll put a link to them below. They glow bright green when illuminated, so they're the perfect color for a TIE Fighter. I straightened out some enamel coated copper wire. Then I measured out the height that the filaments need to sit in order to align properly with the cannons on the front of the TIE Fighter. You have to scrape away the coating on the end of the wire in order for the solder to adhere properly. Checked my circuit and everything was working properly, so I began assembling. Probably should have painted before putting the filaments in place, but the masking tape worked just fine. Once the paint was dry, I put the models in place. And I called it good. I'm happy with this as a prototype. I think there are a lot of different directions I could go with it. I could add different surfaces, uh, like the surface of the Death Star, or terrain, like they're flying low over the ground. Or I could just add stars, or leave it as is. Possibilities are endless, but I'm happy with this. Uh, I think there's potential here. That's the end of this video, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great week. I will see you all next time.